If you have a machete, knife, or an ax handle that you would like to texture up slightly to improve your grip, hang around, I've got a technique for you. All right guys, smooth versus textured. I promise you I'm not gonna talk about peanut butter. Actually, I promised myself I wasn't gonna mention that. However, it's, uh, look, you're either a fan of uh, smooth handle tools or you like textured uh, a textured handle so you've got more of a positive grip on that tool. Uh, me personally, I'm a smooth handled fan. However, um, either, whether you like it smooth or textured, there are some easy steps that you can do to get to that point. Smooth is far easier because just quite obviously you just go through your sandpaper grits until you get to a finish which you like. Um, I like a very smooth finish. Um, but texture tends to be a little bit more challenging. Most people do one or two things. They'll either use a sandpaper, a really coarse, like an 80 grit, or sometimes even 40, and they'll really texture up that surface. It will give you some extra grip. Um, I know a few people over in uh, Florida contacted me and saying that it's actually quite popular for them to do a cord handled, a cord wrapped handle. Uh, it does give you a tremendously positive grip on that tool. Um, I don't know that I'm a huge fan of it simply because apart from taking a very long time to do, um, I think it's going to be a little bit fragile because it, unless you've knotted everywhere throughout this, which is going to change the way the tool feels in your hand, unless you've knotted it everywhere, what, if one of these cords breaks anywhere along that, it's just going to unwrap itself. Um, you can cheat and you can use like a super glue, which I have in certain sections of this, just to reinforce it. Uh, but I think there is a better way. Uh, and this is essentially what this whole video is all about. And it is using files. Files are going to give you a much better textured finish on your handles. Now, for all the people who don't like hearing me talk, which is fine, don't worry, I'm not gonna take it personally. I know I can talk uh, with a mouthful of marvel sometimes. Um, uh, check down below, there's gonna be a little skip ahead where I'm gonna show you two techniques. I'm gonna show you the technique which I've been using for years, which is with a half round file. It, it's gonna give you a very aggressive textured finish which you can target in certain areas uh, but I also want to share with you and that's the main reason why I'm doing this video is how to use a round file to add texture it's a much better technique uh, it's going to give you a more aggressive finish than what you can get with a file that's very easy to do and I haven't seen anyone do it yet and I don't really want to keep this information to myself because I think it's uh, uh, when it comes to texture on a machete handle some people are going to find it a safety issue I'd rather share this uh, it's such a simple technique and it's going to give you a very professional looking finish, a very positive grip on your handle, and it's very fast to do. So first up, one of the things you're going to need to focus on is that you're going to need to shape your handle the way you like it because the texturing is the third last step of the whole process. So it needs to be completely finished to the profile and shape which you like. Uh, if you want to do you know, some smooth and some targeted, um, polish the whole handle and finish it off um, first because you obviously don't, once you've done the texture, you don't want to go there with sandpaper and, and try and smooth out certain sections of it. So first things first is that you need a finished handle. Um, second step is you're going to have to clamp it up. Now, um, if you've got to be careful with this guys, you know, like where you, how you clamp this does actually make a, a a, a big difference. Uh, you don't want to clamp this in a way that that edge is exposed, uh, particularly around your hips, because this is going to be clamped up for a little while. And you know, if your hip brushes up against that edge, I don't care how many times you've wrapped it, it's not safe. Uh, so clamp it in a certain way that's going to keep that edge away uh, from you and anyone else coming in out of your workshop, especially if you have dogs that like jumping up on the benches. Um, I like to use a uh, stitching horse, a leatherwork stitching horse, simply because I've got a really tough one uh, that can handle that, but I just like the height. Um, I'm getting old, my back's getting a bit sore. I don't like bending over as much as I used to. However, if you've got a carpenter's vice, that would probably be the one that I think most people end up using. Um, I will give an example of both in this clip. Now, once it's clamped up, the very first thing, I'm gonna show the round file technique first uh, because it's quite original. The way you hold this file and the way you use it, um, 
you know, with uh, the hand that's on the handle, it's a loose grip because you want this to be able to roll and pivot. All the work is going to be done with the other hand. Now, when you're a kid in school, or if, I don't know if you guys remember, but you know, whenever you do like the Play-Doh and you want to make those long sausages, that's essentially the technique you're going to use. And you, this is the hand that drives the fire. And you are going to work this into the surface while it rolls uh, in all the areas that you want to texture. Now, the amount of pressure which you use, it's not super hard. You know, you know, you're actually just trying to slowly work that grit, that texture of the fire into the timber service, uh, surface. Um, when it comes to the areas where you're rolling up and you're rolling back, and that tends to be the front of the handle and the back of the handle, um, go nice and slow because it's very easy for the file to slip and you'll find you'll just dig a section out. It's still going to be textured, it's just not going to be as pretty. Um, so you work, uh, you try and work the whole handle from that one side. So you start on the low side of where you want to texture and roll backwards and forwards and once you start to get a pattern which you like or a texture which you like, slowly increase the angle and just keep working that file all the way around back backwards and forwards over that handle until you get to the other side where you want to stop. And that's the advantage of using a file to texture your handles is because you can really target the areas that you want textured. So if you want to keep those cheeks nice and smooth, you can uh, just use a file. The next trick is to flip it over. Um, you know, again, same technique, you don't want to choke up on that handle, it wants to be nice and smooth and use your other hand to drive and roll that file to push that technique or that, that texture into your timber handle. And you basically go from one side and you slowly go all the way up, all the way to the, down to the other side. Now, this is really important, when do you stop? Uh, if you go for too long, uh, and too hard, you're going to start uh, removing some of the texture which you put in. So there is a limit. Um, so it doesn't take very long to do this. I would say you could probably do a handle in five minutes. Um, so just be a little bit careful about how much pressure and how much time you spend on any one spot. You're much better off just slowly, slowly building that texture up to a point that you're comfortable with. Now the second technique, which is the one that I think most people would have this file, if you don't have the round file, it doesn't matter, you can get a similar technique or similar uh, finish with a, an aggressive half round file, except you're going to use it more typically like a file. You're going to stroke along, remember files only work in one direction, you've got to push, uh, you're going to work those edges and as you go along you just keep pushing and pushing and slowly increasing that or decreasing that angle until you can roll all the way to the other side. I uh, will give a video shot of that as well because it's, uh, I think a video is worth a thousand pictures really. Alright, from this point on, you can actually leave that handle raw. You don't have to put stain and you don't have to put an oil finish on it. It's perfectly acceptable to use a wooden handle tool without any sort of a finish on that. Um, some people like that for safety, some people don't. Uh, me personally, I do like an, uh, a stained finish as well. Uh, you know, you might as well put a bit of character in your tools. Uh, I like a stained finish and I like an oiled finish as well. So, next thing is I'm going to be doing it would be a stain on this. Now, one of the advantages of a targeted textured section on your handles, which I like to do this middle section here and that spine section there, I find they're the, the two most useful areas on a machete handle, is that when you put your stain on that, the stain is going to soak in really quickly in the textured areas and the smooth areas, which is going to be these cheeks, they're going to be more of your typical, uh, you know, you're going to gently see that grain lifting through. I like that look. It's a little bit unique uh, and it's one of the advantages of using a file because you can really target the areas which you've shaped. The next step after that is if you've done a stain, I, I highly recommend putting an oil finish over that because the stain's going to work out on your hands. The oil finish is just going to give you some sort of a barrier between that. But after that, you know, Danish oil or some sort of a hard oil finish, um, don't uh, you can hear all sorts of people talk about putting like vegetable based oils on their handles. Linseed is about one of the few that I would recommend. You want a drying oil. You don't want an oil that's going to stay. <coughs> that's, it's, you don't want a non-volatile oil basically. You don't want a, like um, olive oil tends to be a typical one that hear people use. It never truly dries out and what you'll find is just going to soften the handle. If you're going to put an oil finish on your handle, boiled linseed oil is about the cheapest and the easiest to get. Um, Danish oil is a little bit more expensive, does exactly the same thing but it's a bit thinner and it dries faster. Uh, there are other handle, op uh, handle treatments that you can use but that would be my recommendation if it was my, my machete. 
All right, where to from here? Would you do a hatchet handle? Um, out of all the axes, a small hatchet would be about the only one that I consider texturing, simply because it's like when you start working with it, you're either choking up on it when you're carving and crafting or doing little work, um, or you're down in this position here where you're chopping and splitting. Um, look, axe handles are always designed really well. They've got a nice big swollen point through here. Um, I've never really found the need to texture a uh, axe handle. However, in winter, I find my hand is a little bit dry. That's when I'm kind of really wanting just that little bit of extra grip. If I was going to put texture on a hatchet handle, I'd be putting it here on the spine, um, just right down at the bottom, and a little bit here, because that tends to be that position where whenever you're splitting or chopping, that's where your hand's going to be. Uh, I well, look, I don't think I'd bother putting it here because of the machete, sorry, the axe handle, it's got enough of a shape that promotes a very good grip anyway. Um, I would not be texturing a axe handle or a splitting axe handle or a splitting mauls handle. Um, that's a swing tool. Um, and what you'll actually find is that when you're using that, you're constantly sliding, it's a two handle tool, you're constantly sliding one hand up and down. Um, that tends to be the better technique. It doesn't need to be textured. You're relying on a properly designed handle to help it retain in your stay in your hand. Uh, knives, um, I don't think I've ever actually needed the idea of, a, I never needed the idea of a texture, I've never liked the idea of a textured handle on a knife. I don't find it necessary, uh, unless it's very poorly designed. If it's a very straight shape um, that doesn't promote a good grip, absolutely put some texture in it if you find it's going to be helpful. All right, guys, what do you think? Um, hopefully someone's going to come up with a better name for that file technique. I don't know, it's like the Namco pretzel roll or... Uh, I don't know, Namco dough roll or something. I don't know, one of you guys is gonna come up with a better name for that technique. Um, share it around, I actually think it's a very effective way of putting a very positive grip on a, a machete handle or any other smooth handle tool. Um, as always, if you found this information helpful, uh, you can say thanks by liking, subscribing, uh, sharing, hitting the bell notification. That does actually make a huge difference to small channels. Um, of course, everyone knows about YouTube. They don't like promoting um, uh, channels like mine. Um, I think they've got a few other videos uh, coming up shortly. I've already actually finished the next Paracord video. It's ready to be uploaded. Well, it's, actually, it's already been uploaded. I just haven't released it yet, but that's not too far away. Uh, the next video, um, I was actually halfway through filming this one, how to do that cord wrap. Um, I was testing an aluminium, all aluminium handle, which I'm actually really liking on a small machete. Look, it's almost balanced. Not that I'm a fan of um, balancing machetes, um, but this, there's something really nice about an all aluminium handle. I wanted a bit of extra grip, so I did the cord wrap. There's something a little bit tricky about this as well, unless I point it out, I don't know how many people are gonna notice this, but um, wrapping uh, downhill is really difficult. And if you notice here, I've got two big downhill wraps. There is a workaround. Um, and uh, that was the next video, which I'm halfway through filming already. Uh, I'd love to share that information with you guys. Um, but until next time, um, Thanks very much for watching. Oh, and by the way, uh, Ian and Oscar, uh, it's just a quick shout out to you guys. Um, Oscar, your dad's a champ. Uh, remember, stop, think, a sharp tool is a safer tool. It's not a safe tool, it's a safer tool. But your dad's a champ. Um, but until uh, the next video, thanks very much for watching, guys. I'll see you later.